I'm taking papers off of all the older pastels that I have to organize and put them in trays of like colors. And Scott is making me a little kind of drawer dresser cabinet thing so that I can put my pastels in. I got it from overstock.com. Yeah, it's gonna look, kind of look like that. It's one of those things that has a thousand different things to screw onto. <laughs> yep. It's gonna take days to get all those pastels ready. Scott is getting ready for his Portrait Society webinar about photography and models and painting and adjusting photos. And while he's doing that, I'm going to be organizing pastels for the hundredth time. Scott did put this together for me, so hallelujah. And now I'm going to be just fitting pastels into little boxes and then putting them in these drawers. It's very tedious, but that's what I'm going to be doing while he is doing his online thing. We got here early on one of our uh, woodcut printmaking classes and I thought before I did a test print, I wanted to do this sort of, it's like a rubbing, you know, rubbing thing just to, you can see the design hopefully. And I'm gonna do it on these two also. Um, but where you got here early so we can get all set. And we also bought, brought these things. These are actually painting panels that we can shellac or put canvas on for when we do oil paintings. But we're hoping that we can get some of that wood texture also and maybe do a first solid print and then this on top of it. We're kind of figuring it all out as we go. So this looks like a Japanese pressing tool. Yeah, that is. Um, she says it's in better the, for linoleum. It's in this uh, catalog. Okay. I got it from here. She says she, you use your like your your. your yeah, it's um, called hand bearing. It's a bearing. Because I've seen different hand. ones. There's ones that are like made out of glass. Glass? They're, yeah, like there's glass bearings. They look glass? like glass. You mean glass? Glass. 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 I have not. Oh, I've seen that. those. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're like big kind paper of weights. Weight things, and so they have weight oh, to them. And have, oh, so yeah. that yeah, but that because it's a weight. Yeah, but this like is kind of neat. Look at how thin this is. Right. Yeah. She was saying that these work really good for linoleum. You know, oh, good. Uh -oh, what's that? Well, um, I think oh. I've got it. Let me wipe that off. <laughs> you know, the Japanese bearing. Oh, um, that's made out of wood? Uh, that made of uh, right here. You can you can hear, yeah. you can see that. Now, that one is hand made. made. Oh, so, wow. that is expensive. Yeah. Um, I have that speedball one with the handle. I no, like that one. Yeah, because it made out of the plastic? handle is it's way up here. Awful. No. Yeah. This one, yeah. you, can you can actually, really, yeah. yeah. But still, that's for detail, I, the spoon. You I cannot have, beat the spoon. I, that's what I use. So this right. one is about $45. This one, yeah. And I had I had it for years. And you can actually uh, you replace, replace it. it. Oh, replace, replace it. The, but I never okay. do, and you see, $19. $19. You can just peel it off and replace it. Okay. I never did. Yeah. I got two of them, so, yeah. you know. Oh wow! Now it's a linoleum. Yeah, I have the. And how did yeah? And and then here. I think he uh, varnished it. He yeah. probably varnished or sh or maybe polyurethane did. Oh, and uh -huh. that's a print he did. Uh, yeah, and then he burned Donna. the paper. Oh my God! I almost hey. forgot. <laughs> Wait, so <laughs> like, <laughs> I am so glad that you're coming. Oh, yeah. when you yeah. are, you finished so, yours. Okay. I'm, I'm here to see what everyone's yeah. done. Oh yes, I haven't yes, done any certainly. Cut for that. Oh, now, yeah. how did you make the? These, oh, uh, I did it on a piece of paper, just sketchbook paper. Okay. Uh, from my pad. Yeah, and then, and then I you burned it. it. Uh -huh. And then I just put uh, gesso, clear gesso on this. Yeah. And then, I put and then clear, you put that, put that on. on it, and, and then, then I, you find it. Clear, clear gesso. Oh, I didn't varnish it. I mean, the clear. Thing, yeah. Clear. Clear gesso. So this is like one gesso. of those. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so that was, yeah, that was that board. one. And I printed some others, but I just did drawings. That out. is neat to uh, do that on the on a wood board. Yeah, that's very. Yeah, cool. then I because of the paper, I thought you could. And then I 
since it's gessoed with clear gesso, I can paint on top of it with oil or with whatever I want, ah, you know? So I could do ah, paintings, I could do a painting. Yeah, I use this as yeah, the background. I'm, I would love to. And I did some others with, with this one. So I did that one. Oh, oh yes, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. So yeah, and then I did it on paper. I did these just really quickly, like in a, Ooh, yes, in an hour. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then you just, you just um, hand, so, yeah. Hand so how did you do six so oh, sure. So you're kind of making these ink blocks to create now, abstractions. Let me see how you do that. Yeah. What I did then is I took a piece of like you get those those thin pieces of plexiglass that you put in the frames from Jerry's. Oh right. And they already have the S, so I didn't even take that off. It has that plastic oh, yeah, on top of them. And you didn't even take that off. I just, yeah. I didn't take it out. And there. then you just um, so, yeah. you rub it onto the plexi. What I did is I put this, I, I put um, acrylic paint on right. this, this color, acrylic paint on this. Uh -huh. And then I pressed it, this just against this. the plexi. Uh -huh. And then I printed, and then used it to make I the pressed paint. one of them against the plexi to get, to get this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I just actually, this one, I just, yeah. I didn't even, it was almost a ghost. I just used the same thing, and I just pressed this against oh, it, so this. Uh, I didn't even have to re-ink it. Like, that is so clever. Yes, yes. I, I just wanted to see if I could I live. I did the same thing with this on this heavier watercolor right, paper right. to see if I could get that. And but this, that this already had a so. tone on it. That's yeah. from, very cool. Basically just from rubbing the brayer, cleaning yeah, the brayer. Yeah. And, and that uh, piece of acrylic. It's acrylic. It's just yeah. acrylic, acrylic, yeah. Okay. And yeah. uh, this this one was uh, I did this one with oil, right? With oil yeah, on this. This is oil. Okay. That was the first one. I was just curious to see how it came out. So I I actually just used the brayer and put different colors on it, and so you get reds right, and right, blues right. and a little bit of yellow. Yeah, that you can so, yeah. you know you can do that or you can do a more disciplined way is right. what we call a rainbow roll. Oh yeah. Which we may do that today right. if we have time. Yeah. Uh, but. You know, for rubbing it, that right. is what is what it called. It's almost a, like a alapoke. Alapoke oh, yeah, meaning that you rub the ink in various places oh, and, right, right. and smooth yeah. it out to so yeah. it. Uh, and that you use it, you know, using right. um, a brayer. So right. that is the same, um, you know, yeah. principle. And then this, this one. I can't, I can't get over this guy. This was I also have, just. A, I have you're such a so neat much. freak, and we are. Yeah. yeah. This is a paper that I was I was do, working on a, a watercolor and an acrylic it's painting. An experiment, right? But that was a separate painting that I did, and then I was just using this paper to clean the, the roller off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then right. I just, it's so easy to just quickly print these things from the linos, and then this is also just cleaning yeah. off my watercolor palette. I just pressed this against the watercolor yes, palette. Yes, I did. I did that a, a, a lot. And uh, these I, are just. You know, you know, I love these. I, I just love time. these these things. When I just my watercolor palette, I just press these in. And they'd be great backgrounds. And, yeah. and then you can also yeah. you know just use it to print on whatever yes. images. Yeah. But I love these sorts of real. Uh, yeah. Real uh, faded ones. Yes. I, I don't do things over the top of yeah. them. Or more, more grassy. Mm -hmm. oh, I, like no, I think this is just sketchbook this paper. This is sketchbook paper. White sketchbook, sketchbook paper. paper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then this paper is this. And this here. is all right. lino. It's not woodcut. This is These are yeah. lino. Yeah. Uh, but you could do the same thing with the woodcut. Yeah. yeah. You you can just press it in and no, rub I, it too. What I was glad to hear is that you could do that and make it look that way with lino. So yes, I haven't worked yes. with it at all. And, and lino yeah. would be easier to uh, transfer sure. your image. Right. Uh, oh, do you mind telling me how you got the reverse image here? I missed oh. that. I worked a little bit more on my cat by creating more of a window shape here and a reflection here carving out more because I thought that she looked way too hairy. So we'll see. And then this was the board that we brushed really, really, really heavy last week to get the grain. And then we might do a print of this and then let that dry and then do this on top. And it's all experimenting because today is the last day of our class. And then from now on, after today, Scott and I will just rent this room for the um, presses. Yeah, sorry. So transparent base. Looks like honey. You add that to your colors to make it a little bit lighter. Oh, they're having to open. And I use the plastic knife 
uh, instead of an uh, inking knife because the plastic knife stay with it. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't, I mean, if I use a, uh, an inking knife, then if I mix the inking knife, in I use the inking knife to mix the color, sometimes I would get other yeah. color to it. But this one is pure. So I never would um, contaminate yeah. that ink. Right, yeah. so I always use that now to um, to add. Now, if I'm gonna go go, just do this much. See, it's already gone. You know what happened? Uh oh, it wasn't it's, clean good. It's that it's my my uh, it's my own palette, um, my own inking knife. Oh. Blue is notorious. <laughs> it stays with you forever. Oh, yeah, 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 because yeah, I and can't so. You look at this. Yeah, because it's right? clean. Yeah. Yeah, that well, happens with fault. all of us it's and brushes really and everything. Every, <laughs> no more. Okay, so so I will use this is good. Right. Okay, here is so my professor we say, especially for for red or for black. Mm -hmm. You add it pinhead after pinhead. So this is not sort of like a pinhead. Right? Like a little pea size. Yeah, pea size. And then maybe a little bit more. And then you work it in. And I need more, right? Because this is a big board. I'm going to add a little bit more. Mona, do you always mix the transparent or do you? No, I don't sometimes always. Sometimes you use the straight on there. I use it straight because sometimes I use a lot of ghost and ghost print is almost like the transparent base. Okay. Transparent base, one thing about this kind of transparent base, sometimes because it adds a lot of oil in it to uh, make it transparent, and if you have a lot of transparent base and a little bit of pigment, after you, you, you print it, it may have a halo effect. Oh, right. The oil seep out mm -hmm. to the paper. Mm -hmm. And that, a lot of people don't like. Oh, yeah. So, I, I mean, you just have to strike the balance, yeah. right? So here, let, let's just do a little bit more. That is, look, that looks like honey. It, it does. does, doesn't it? I'm going to put a bit more. And then remember to use another, you know, inking knife. You know, pre-making can be very messy, but it has to be also precise because um, you just don't want to contaminate other things. All right, so here. is the sometimes it doesn't even even really show all right then I'm gonna have to use a, a wider now I mentioned it a, a, a little bit at first we uh, after we we after we um, we clean the uh, um, brayer, we put some baby powder. In. Baby powder is talc. It absorbs um, the, the moisture. So if the moisture stay put, you know, in the in the rubber, it at you know, you know, um, often time in the longer run, the rubber get tacky. tacky yeah, sticky. So it hardly, you hardly see it, right? But I tell you, it will show. Especially when you're inking it on this board. And yeah, uh, who prepared the board? We did last week. We remember Mona and Scott scratched it with that wire brush. Okay. I did not. I, I really heavy. So it's just, 
it's a it's a uh, it's a board yeah so we try to um, wire brush it to bring out um, to bring out the um, the wood grain and then grain. and then it was shellacked or yeah varnished a couple times now this wood though I'm not sure that it will show but you know we'll see we'll try it out, we'll try it out. That's also the, the amber yeah. um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. And I can uh, paper. Sue, so is this you don't use this paper, use a white paper. You want to use the white paper? Yeah. I have white paper now. Do we have All some the over here? Are cut here? Okay, I'm gonna try one. And that one is for no this one this is for the square one. Right? This is for the okay. smaller one. So let's, I am, uh, okay. We're using good paper to begin with because you don't know how many prints you're going to get off of it. Like, we're just using one of those birch panels, so we're not sure. So this is my point. And then you line that up. Tighten, but we can peel it off and see. I, I have a feeling that it's a little too light. Because the static. Right. Very light. Mm, very light. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See how light it is? Wow, that's really Yeah, scary. it almost isn't showing yeah. on this side. Right, and yeah. that side again, it's the... So it's getting to know the press okay. and realize yeah, that one side one is time. needs to be tighter than the other. Yeah, that side is tight. It's kind of beautiful how seven. subtle and ghost it is. Oh, this is those seven also. Remember, it was like one and a half yes. difference. Uh, six. I mean, eight. No. Six. Six. Yeah. Okay. I'll, do, I'll do six and a half. It's still, it's still, it's still, still pretty light, yeah. Yeah, it might be the inking, but you know what? We can, I, I but you. you know, I, I just have we the can feeling turn, that we can turn this thing around, yeah, and see if it comes out when we put it through again. Um, then we'll know if it, if it's right. the ink or not. So they've so tried it multiple uh, times. All right, now inked it. Now the other side of the paper. This press bed is, um, is does have the problem because you see yeah that has more ink and well this this, this was the other one this was the oh the, this is the other one the other right. we're doing the other okay. side now so yeah it's still that's even better side, even yeah. worse it looks kind of no it does have like it does it. have the I grain like it. Yeah. it looks like wheat going yeah. up to a sky i like it it's sky. not what we were trying to get right it looks cool. uh -huh. Yeah, this side oh, of the press just doesn't that seem to... That is quite nice. That's quite nice. So, and you can actually so, see that grain. Yeah, yes. you can yeah. see the grain. And this one, because it's thicker, I mean... This is know, something precious, we can use, though, because that looks neat. Yeah. yeah. Um, or you could yeah, even have this sky. be a yellow sky. Like, Absolutely, you could do it this you way. Can you can print way, something darker right, down here and let it go off. You can do it this way. Yeah. Then, yeah. You can do it this way. I mean, but for, for you know, a printmaker's standpoint, I'm not satisfied, right? No. Because it's not what we were intending. Uh huh. And um, so there's some this, problem this? with this side. So this was the second um, try, and we're kind of loving the experiments. This is not what we were hoping for. Meaning, we were hoping to have it be solid, but we're gonna keep them and use I'm gonna them. Talk to more too, because I. Because yeah, it's kind of neat. You never know what's gonna happen. I am looking through this catalog, and I swear to God, my art obsession is, oh, I want to get this. I've been seeing YouTube videos of the woman who does a koa. Oh my God, but it's 250 bucks. Oh, okay. Oh, and I want to get a registration bars. Oh, and I want to get some Japanese papers. Oh my God, and I want to get some glassine. 
I, I swear, I'm addicted to stuff. I think as all artists, we just, maybe we think that if we buy stuff, that it's going to magically like come out like the way we see people do it. But I'm really, I'm really getting a little too excited. A little too excited. <gasps> what is that? Oh, engraving. Well, I'm, I'm really into, I want to get some mezzo print stuff. Okay. Okay, that's too exciting. So I have a bunch of mezzo print. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to get a loan. <laughs> I want to get one of these boards for our studios. See how it's like a wood bracket in the back? And then you put this off and you can actually have these little, you know, hangers that people put. Maybe when Scott adds his new little extension, we can do that in there. But this would be great for rollers and rayers and tape. Oh my god, I, I'm just so into learning to organize. So, we're just waiting. We're still figuring out the press. We're trying to figure out exactly why it's doing what it's doing. I'm not all way at the vert variation. Yeah, and it really picked up the center. So they did a print of just the yellow. And then they did a little bit of yellow on this to soften the black. A little bit of wood grain in the background. Wonderful. All right. That was fun. That was fun, yeah. And I'll show you. I did my first cat one with just a spoon, so I didn't use the press. And you see these little um, marks are really the spoon. And that show, it almost looks like a drawing then. And then I went and I put a little bit of red and yellow. And I am uh, just using the spoon and I'm rubbing it on the back of it. This is the one I just did with a spoon. So you can actually see the kind of spoon marks. And I had a little bit of kind of yellow and red. And so it's slight. You can see a little you can see a little bit of yellow coming through. And if you got better and better, you would see where you can be lighter and where you can press down heavier. I can't really see the wood grain that much. Maybe just the tiniest bit, maybe the slightest bit of vertical wood grain, but Yeah, that's fun. Oh my gosh. Scott, you're upside, upside down. down. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Scott can have that one. I should be upside down. It's picking. No, it's picking. That's I okay. The, I picked that it up. That is so. We get a lot of magazines or catalogs that have our images in them sometimes, and I just completely forget to video them. Sometimes we take photos, but a lot of times we just can't keep them all, so we throw them out or give them away to people. But I wanted to show that the Art of the Portrait is, has a journal, and you can subscribe and become a member, and this is issue number 96. And for the upcoming Portrait Society in May, they did a little spotlight on me because I'm teaching a class for them. So it was an article about achieving dynamic color with pastel. And it's pretty much just about all the, kind of how I'm changing a little bit with my technique. And so it was just me talking about it and just showing some of the pastels that I've been doing recently. So I just wanted to show that. But this is, it's you know, they profile all kinds of members. So it's a good organization to be a part of. And um, so I just wanted to show you that. And then something out of the blue, which was kind of interesting. Scott sometimes gets um, queries to see if they could use his work in books or magazines or puzzles and stuff. And this one was completely different for Scott. So this magazine is called um, Collaboration, the Journal of the Integral Yoga of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Now, if anyone knows Scott, that is totally not in his wheelhouse, but um, Fall, Winter, Volume 47, but they asked if they could use one of his paintings for a poem. And this is a painting that Scott did. Now, they, it was in color, but they just turned it into black and white. A painting he had sold at the Preter West years ago. And this is a woman that we met 
um, in Monument Valley. So she used the Navajo. And we went out there and painted, and Scott took photos of her. She got dressed up all in her most beautiful, and she's wearing, I mean, this is a very colorful painting, but they um, just used it to kind of illustrate this poem over here. And um, anyway, so before I give it away, or, you know, because we can't keep everything, I thought I would just document that. Here's another magazine I had on a table and I completely forgot about. So the March, um, the February March issue of International Artist. And when I got this magazine, I was so surprised and honored, but also shocked to see this. I was like, whoa, it always startles me when I see my work. It, it no matter even if I know it's happening, I think that, I mean, months ago they asked me like months, months ago, they asked, oh, Susan, you know, can we use one of your images? But, you know, the Portrait Society has so many ads and so many things to promote it that I just didn't think I would actually see it. So when I opened this magazine and I saw this, I was like, yeah, to you, right? I was like, whoa, I don't know. It's, it's always startling. And I'm, I'm always asking Scott, like, why did they choose that? But it's, it's nice. I, I guess it's so nice. So... Anyways, um, when they had an article on Scott, so, oh, hi, Annie. Um, so it was his process of doing this painting on how he had worked on a painting and you see how it's like upside down and then he didn't like it. So sometimes he just scrapes or put abstract stuff and he started it again and he worked a long time. He kind of went back and forth and back and forth with this painting, you know, trying to figure out like, to do it more impressionistic, more realistic, what colors to use. He even put a necklace in it, and then he took the necklace out. And Annie is like very, very interested. So she's wobbling this table. And um, and so when he, he reads about the, what he does in the different stages, but that was, that was really nice that they did that. And that painting um, is up one of our great models, Rose. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much. We received, um, Scott and I received each of our books, The Art of Seeing, Everett Raymond Kinsler on painting. And it's a book written by Michael Shane Neal, uh, an apprentice of Kinsler for many, many years. And um, Kinsler is like the modern day sergeant. He has passed away a couple years ago, um, just a wonderful gentleman. We met him and knew him from the Portrait Society of America. And um, just what a, a genuine, nice guy. But just the stories he would have. Oh my gosh. If you could just imagine a beautiful note by Michael. If you could just imagine he, him knowing all the illustrators and knowing all the movie stars and famous writers of his time from the 40s and 50s and 60s. Um, he painted everybody. Well, anyways, what a great book. So wonderful that Michael did this about Everett because it's just all the thoughts and teachings and lessons and philosophy. It's kind of like a modern day um, art spirit. So any artist, especially artists that like the type of work that Scott and I do, would know about the art spirit by Robert Henry. And it's just a beautiful book. I hope you guys buy it. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube videos. I love it when people write me about them and I have fun doing them. So I'm so glad that people are enjoying them. Please subscribe and follow me and Scott on our Instagram pages, our website, and also on our patreon.com forward slash Susan Lyon.